Hey there! So in this video, I'm going to be talking about running Selenium on uh, a Raspberry Pi and how I got it to work. I'm not going to run it because I don't want to get in trouble um, and I, I hid in some details. I'm just going to talk about it and put the code on the description of this video so you can sort of like figure it out for yourself. Anyways, let's get started. So um, this is my Python file. Obviously, I'm, ref I'm using an, uh, a virtual environment so you want to put this shebang um bin the reference to the virtual environment or wherever your python is located and uh what i uh what i did is when you import all this this is uh import the time module you'll need it because um well apparently uh you should well the thing is when you're running this program uh the time weight the, the options are available for selenium uh they they work and they don't work in the sense that um, these some, some of these websites have great security, and they can tell if you're running a, a bot or not, if you're running Selenium or not. So I use time, and I, I think I time it for 20 seconds or 30 seconds. Depend. If it's on a Raspberry Pi, I think I, I set it for 20 seconds or 30 seconds. Anyhow, RE is regular expression. Uh, I'll, I'll show you why I use that. I should probably change this to 30 seconds. Okay, so you need this, all these, all these imports, you need buy, you need keys, you need options, because I'm running Gecko, I'm using running Firefox, I'm not running Chrome, because uh, I learned uh, Firefox, I think there's some options for Firefox that's not available, and I'm all, you also need service, this is new, uh, previously, in previous versions, you didn't need it, but now you need it, anyways, this will be in the description, let's talk about my functions, so I have a global function here, is, and I'm going to be using it for a time module for for 30 second delay between um, requests. I have a whole bunch of global variables. That's sort of unimportant because I'm trying to get um, data from uh, from the page, from the security web page. And um, I want to make it available to other functions so I don't have to like pass it over. So I just made a global function so it's available to all the functions on this page. Anyhow. Um, I have FF op options, and I found these options online as much as I could. These are Firefox options. So I have headless, meaning that I don't want to open the window. I just want it to run without a window opening because um, it's a Raspberry Pi, and it's going to take a lot of like resources to open this window. Some of these ones, I have no idea what they do, <laughs> what they do. I think I read some in briefly, but. They're used and apparently they're, um, I guess they're recommended. So I have no sandbox and access auditor and, and a whole bunch of them here that was sort of recommended. So uh, I'm gonna put this in the description as well, so you guys can maybe you can use it or you don't you don't have to use it. So this is just this is just a list. I just made a list of these options, and over here is also another. This is a dictionary, by the way. Uh, so over here and the user agent, I believe it's it's something there. And over here, permissions. Again, this is all will also be provided in the um, documentation. So I have all these options. These are all this, this is a dictionary. This is a list. And so you, I initialize this object right here, Firefox options. And because uh, I like to do one-liners, I don't have. I don't actually like to write the for loop. So this is just a one-liner. So it's just a for loop. So it's looping through these options up here. It's looping through each one of these. Here, so op, so for options in that, this is the for, this is the for statement. That's the for statement, and I want to put options add argument opt. So that and then this is called um, these brackets here, and in this for loop inside, it's called a comprehension list. It's just I'm just using a for loop. That's all it really is. It's just a short, a short one liner way of doing a for loop. And I do the same thing here for option set preferences. Again, I'm using a for loop. And because this, is, um, this here is um, a dictionary, I'm grabbing the items from this. So key and value. This is the key. This here is the key. That here is the value. So I'm grabbing those two options here. I'll oh, start here. For in, in this for loop, this is a for loop again. And I'm popping them into here options. So again, this is a comprehension list. I'm just using a comprehension list as, as a one-liner for loop. So you can you can use a for loop the long way, or you can do, do this if you want to save if you want to save like space. Anyhow, 
should always put print statements so you know where we're going. Here is a path to my gecko drivers. Now, here, this is where I got uh, some problems earlier because I because I had to run on my Raspberry Pi and I'm looking for a gecko driver that runs on a Raspberry Pi. So just so you know, I have a Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. Apparently, these gecko drivers... Now, let me show you where I got these gecko drivers. I got them right here at this website. Mozilla Gecko Drivers. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, of this website. Anyways, the, basically, apparently, this one over here, Arch Linux, Gecko Driver R for Arch Linux, uh, apparently it works for your Raspberry Pi and 3 and 4, uh, so it, wor it works for the ARM processor as well, this, this Arch Linux 64 bits. So this is the one I'm using, and uh, yeah, it works pretty well. I had to look around for a while, and I eventually I just, just gave it a try, just gave it a try, and it works. And I think somewhere along the line, someone recommended it. So, so I'm using this one on my Raspberry Pi 3. So over here, uh, I'm initializing the driver, right here. Apparently, you have to use this serv. Uh, you have to use this service, this service uh, um, object. I don't know why that's popping up. To um, the service object, the reference the the Gecko driver. So the the Gecko, my Gecko driver. This is just a generic. Uh, path. So I made a path to my Gecko driver and I put it right here in service. And options equals options. These options are basically this right here. This options here. Or I'm just op this. So this, 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 this option here is a reference to this option right here. And this here options is just part of the, you know, the input statement for the, for the, for the Firefox driver. So this option here. The same thing as this option here. Okay, so again, I'm using um, time sleep delay, and apparently you have to use time sleep delay with some of these security uh, from these websites. We have a lot of security, um, and you know, if you're running this, if you're automating this in, in the morning, then what, what what do you care about having the website run fast? So yeah, it will take a long time, but if you're if you're doing if you're automating it, then who cares the time? If you just run at a specific time, and if it takes a long time, it takes a long time. Um, and like I said, if it's automated, then you shouldn't really care. So I'm using time sleep. I'm not using the Selenium um, provided uh, op uh, time, time options because they don't work. Uh, apparently, some of these websites are smart enough to detect that. But if you use time sleep and you, you make the delay long enough, these websites, they won't be able to detect it. So here... I'm finding the element. I'm using the ID, and the I. If, by finding element by ID is a great way because for ID, there's only one ID per page, so this is unique for the whole page. So using ID is always always a great option. I'm setting my username here, because so it's basically I'm getting the element. This is the whole point. The whole point is to get the element, and I'm setting my username, and I'm setting the keys the return. So that hits enter, and I'm timed the the, the, the basically. Time sleep again for 30 seconds. Then, um, and you have to use this time sleep as much as possible because uh, it, then it screws up somehow. And again, I'm doing here for my password the same thing. Enter my password, keys return. Again, time sleep. I'm printing out the statement here as the website person. So I changed this so I wouldn't, because uh, <laughs> I'm grabbing my pay stubs and I want to email it to myself because I hate visiting the I hate visiting the website. I'm doing the same thing here. Uh, so now I am, so basically I'm visiting this paste up website, right? And I can do the same thing. I can grab the element and grab, but it seems like a bit of a waste of time. I, I might as well get the, I want the page source, like the code, the entire code for the page. However, if you, um, if you try to, if you don't put, if you don't put this here, right, then you get nothing. You, you literally get nothing. So you have to wait until this entire page loads. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, so yeah, you have to wait until this entire page loads. So you wait, you gotta wait until it loads. I have a 30 second delay. And as soon as it loads, then over here, I think this one over here, page driver page source. When you use this driver page source uh, here, it literally, it literally grabs the entire context, basically the web page, all the contents of the web page, uh, it, it grabs it right here, and I'm, I'm turning it into a string. And I'm using regular expression over the, this over here is regular expression. 
I'm using regular expression to find certain objects, uh, certain certain uh, patterns on the website. But uh, I noticed that regular expression sort of screws up if, if there's a lot of spaces and if there's a lot of returns and a lot of these new characters. So basically, I'm from the web page. I'm removing. From the web from the code from the web source i'm removing all this the new line characters those are those enters those are like new lines and i'm returning all the carriages this is rarely there but it, it could be there but i'm just going to save that removing them as well and over here because uh, re sub means substitution is mean over here it means all the spaces all the all the spaces between um all the spaces between tags so this is a space between tags this represents space, and this represents more than one, and this means non-greedy, uh, meaning that uh, it will it just it's best to use this question mark all the time, and I'm replacing it with this. So basically, uh, if you have a website, let me just show you a website. Let's inspect. Uh, let's do each page source. Oh, it's not letting me hit the page because I'm not I'm not online. That's okay. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So basically, all these spaces in between these tags and stuff, I'm just removing them, so everything should be compressed. So there's a lot of space here, last space. Basically, it screws your regular expression screws up if there's a lot of spaces, and and enter between the pages. So I basically, I'm just the whole point of this here is to remove all those spaces, and once all those spaces are removed, then I start finding the what I need to find using regular expressions on the page, and I'm just grabbing all, all everything here the days, pain, everything, all that stuff. And then eventually, I, I don't have it here, I deleted it, but I'm basically, I'm just gonna email it to myself. So every every pay date, I'll be emailing myself this data. But you can use it for other things, though. Anyhow, uh, that's I just wanted to tell you, talk about that, because it took me a long time to figure it out. Um, maybe, I think, half a day or something, something along those lines. Uh, especially with the Gecko drivers. So, yeah, that's it, that's it for this video.